for nothing is impossible with God. Mary answered, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. And these are the last gospel words we will hear in our season of Advent. All four candles are lit now. The next time we gather, the Christ candle in the middle will be lit. Shepherds will be abiding. Angels will be adoring. And a newborn king will be laid in a feeding trough with animals. But for today, on this fourth and final Sunday of our Advent season of preparation, of repentance, of being ready to make room in our hearts and in our lives, make straight the path of our Lord in this world, in our homes, in our spirits. But these are the final words that we hear from Mary, the mother of our Lord, where she says, in simple humility and obedience, may it be to me as you have said. May it be to me as you have said. A rather formal way, <coughs> beautiful way, to put what we have heard so many times and will say yet again today. Quite simply, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, in my life, and for those whom I love. May thy will be done. Our final Advent message where we have spoken much about preparation, about making that path straight so that Christ might be glorified here within this temporal world from nation to nation and tribe to tribe, that Christ might be glorified within our own lives, with our own homes, through our decisions, through our choices, that we would repent and we would turn away with the glorious understanding, with the gracious benefit of knowing that the Lord's mercy is everlasting. His renewal is offered to us day by day. That those who have called upon the name of the Lord can know and be assured that even as we continually stumble and fall, we might turn to Him, repent and return around and be made new again and again and again. We've spoken that the Lord tarries and He waits and He holds, not due to His forgetfulness, but through His patient love. That with every day He does not return, we and this world get one more blessed opportunity to draw closer to Him, to hear His words. And for those who sit in darkness like the dead of long ago, to see the light of Christ, and to be brought in His eternal kingdom. And last week, on our Rose Sunday, as we have spent this time preparing hearts and souls and bodies and minds for the gift of Christ at Christmas and for His promised return to set things right in His glory and in His peace now and forever. That we never lose sight of why we are preparing or for whom we are being prepared. That we might rejoice in all of our circumstances, good, bad, and indifferent. That we're not rejoicing about those circumstances, but we are rejoicing in He who will bring us through those circumstances. Whether the highest of mountaintops or the deepest and darkest valleys of the shadow of death. For the Lord Himself, unlike our circumstances, He never changes. The same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And when things are bad and when things are good. When things are happy and when they are sad. 
when our circumstances fill us with delight, or when they try to pull us into despair, we might rejoice and give thanks, not in those circumstances, but in he who is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, who is our King, who is our Lord, who is our Savior, and who is our friend. <coughs> now as this time of preparation and joy draws to its conclusion, only one more candle to be lit, the candle that we will light when the angels sing, shepherds gather around a manger. And the newborn king is laid in humility with the animals. That we might be able to say and that we might be able to pray. May it be to me as you have said. on earth as it is in heaven. May thy will be done in my life and in the lives of those whom I love. This Advent time <coughs> which points to the coming of Christ at Christmas, to his promised return in triumph and in glory and even in the advent of our lives, which reminds us that even our own lives will come to their natural and mortal conclusion one day. This world and all that we know and understand will come to its natural and mortal conclusion as well. And there may not be candles marking just how long we have in this earthly life or just how long God's creation has to wait and long and hope for its renewal and redemption in His eternal glory. But we can know and be assured it is sooner today than it has ever, ever been. And this promise will be fulfilled in the advent of our lives as we await a final candle to be lit that which we know to come to an end and all that will truly last finally come to its beginning that we might say and that we might pray like Mary <coughs> in humility, in obedience, in faith, may it be to me, as you have said, I will be done on earth as it is on earth. It's been a long several days. It has very much been an advent time for my family. We've gathered around a hospital bed and we just keep watch and we keep vigilant. And in a sense, we almost feel candles being lit. And we know that the end is soon. Came back late last night, and I'll leave again when this service is complete. And I hope that he is resting in peace and comfort. And it really is any moment now. There have been times where you don't know, what do we pray for? We pray for health and healing. We pray for wholeness and restoration. Karen Blackwell is in the same position. As she is in the hospital with her mother on the other side of the state. Except this time, we're being reminded that death is not always easy. It's not always peaceful. And sometimes it's very hard. And the suffering is very sharp. What do you pray for? Healing or restoration? Pray for 
death and release. Pray for hope and renewal. When you have nothing left to pray for, you offer the prayer that can and will never fail. To simply say, may it be to me as you have said. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In my life and in the lives of those I love. And sometimes we want more time. Sometimes we want less. And yet our wills are not His. We can't know or fathom or understand the mysterious depths of his will and his plan. And when I try to control and when I try to guide and I try to direct, I can see how woefully short I fall. God is gracious and is merciful, loving us and even our families more than we can know or understand. With a faithfulness that endures throughout our circumstances, our lives, our deaths, from ages to ages. Knowing that even when we can't pray, His Spirit intercedes on our behalf with groans too deep to utter. And within the advent of our lives where we're remembering a world that waited and hoped and longed for a Savior, that had not yet heard the angel sing, but cried out to God and asked and pleaded for Him to finally make this promise good. That we can wait within our own mortal life and not know what's going to come next. The easy or the hard. The peaceful or the painful. The silent or the suffering. There's days or moments. Whether it is months or years, we can take assurance within the advent of our lives, of this world, and the lives of those whom we love. God's promises are true. And they are good. That his will surpasses our understanding and his blessings even surpass what we could ask for or pray for. That we, like Mary, might be humble. Even when we cannot understand what is possible and what is not. we can simply know the promise and love of our Lord and trust in Him for whom nothing is impossible. And to pray for healing and health and wholeness and restoration. And I'm not ashamed to ask that those who are sick and ill be restored by the hand of God. But I also know that my dad will be well soon. Fully and completely. And restored. And healthy. And whole. So rather than have a plan, rather than make an outline or idea of this is how everything ought to go. On this final Sunday of the Advent season, with only one last Christ candle to light. In the Advent of our lives, not knowing how long we are granted with those whom we know. In the Advent of this world, where all things will come to their end, 
so that all true things might finally begin. And that those who continue to dwell in the darkness like the dead of long ago might see the light of Christ. we can offer our words and our prayers along with the mother of our Lord and say in humility and in obedience, in hope and in faith. May it be to me as you have said. Thy will be done in my life and in theirs, on earth as it is in heaven.